So my first poem is called Glucose. <laughs> I find lancets in old purses and pants pockets. I find syringes in my luggage and dresser drawers. I don't have diabetes, but in recent years it consumed me. You did the tests at home more than three times a day. You carried insulin in your handbag with the polka dot scarf for embellishment. You carried insulin in your hand, I'm sorry, a list of daily doses of Humalog and Lantus. You savored your independence, sometimes over your own safety. You picked when to chuck your sugars, how to dole out insulin, and when and what to eat. I hate diabetes. I miss it. Diagnosed at 10, you lived a whole life with type one before I got involved, before I acted and labeled myself an expert. How the hell did you do it, mom? I am transferred back in time. I see your fingers, the turquoise glass ring from the Christmas tents. I miss the blood glucose test. I miss holding your hand incognito under the table at dinner the busy Italian restaurant in the West Village, your surprise 65th birthday. Hold the lancet, pierce the soft skin of your ring finger, middle or index, one thick drop of blood on the end of the strip, the voice in the talking meter. Five, four, three, two, one. Your blood glucose level is 120. The perfect number when you feel your best. You told me this is fact, mom. 50 or 30 was the low blood sugar danger zone. Lows included slurred speech and unconsciousness could come. Trouble arrived when the numbers skyrocketed over 150. Irritability, nausea began. At the emergency room, blood sugar levels stabilized. Normal meant you could go home and get back to your routine to type the story of your life on your talking computer. Diabetes became a part of my skin. Involved soul. Mom, strength is hereditary. Thank you. <laughs> Elephant Butte. Those hot, dry desert days at Elephant Butte in the summer, catching striped bass side by side. My dad, he taught me how to cast. The days began when he backed up our silver Chevrolet truck with the bass pro boat and took it off the trailer. I held the boat at the loading dock. He drove away to park while I, while I maintained the vessel on shore. Other families would turn on the engines and float or speed away. At 8, 10, and 12, I stood out, securing the boat, like securing, securing our family with my mom who could not see inside. Positioned at the helm, my skin stuck to the brown leather seat, me in my red bikini with polka dots and plastic white sunglasses. The scorching wild wind swept past me, life preserver covering my preteen frame, looking out over the gray blue lake to see myself surrounded by mountains and the island where the goats live. I can still see the mini beaches, the tiny paradise where we passed, cruising the lake, feeling the bumps, the harsh waves beneath us, sometimes smooth, skimming the top. Many nights harsh and violent on the return to camp. The small yet powerful bass tracker always got us to our destination, in the coves my father discovered. We filled it with laughs and good food, packages of peanut butter crackers, ham and cheese sandwiches from home, cool drinks of Diet Pepsi with lime. Dragonflies landed on the end of my fishing pole, buzzing away in the late afternoon quiet. After a few hours of basting in the sun, mom and dad let me jump in. My father drove away from my mother and me on election day 2000. Throughout my life, I stood on shore, clutching the boat with my mother in it. Thank you. Wow. 
Oh, this is one I'd love to read from my mom. Friends Only for a Moment by Patricia Harmon. Time is a friend because it takes us from people and places when it is time for going. And there is almost always a time for going. A time when you are no longer welcome or a time where, by the person or the environment. Few friendships are everlasting. Few attractions to familiar places are never ending. Time changes friends. Time changes places. Most of all, time changes us. Returning to remembered friendships and past places makes me want to be the way I was then. But I like what I am now. Going back would be impossible and unwelcome. A friend is like a moment. Time exaggerates the beauty, the intimacy, the strength, the intensity, the hurt, and the desirability of a moment and of a friend. As the mind wanders back through a lifetime, friends and moments mark all parts of our lives. They highlight our lives like neon signs along the roadway. I cannot return to an already lived moment. I cannot return to see an old friend and find them unchanged. Fearful, I sometimes abandon thoughts of returns and reunions. Time is my friend because it takes me from people and places when it is time for going. As time continues, people and places fulfill needs within me. Few friendships are everlasting, never ending. Time brings me friends only for a moment. Thank you. Thank you.